Thank You're out you. with a, a joint op-ed this morning in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, the title of it will protect both life and IVF. You're announcing a bill today through this legislation that would require as a condition your words of receiving federal Medicaid funding that states don't prohibit IVF. Now, concerns about IVF stemmed really, Senator Britt, from your state of Alabama. Absolutely. The uh, Supreme Court came out, they said that these embryos in IVF, they are considered children under the wrongful death of a minor act. And then the Alabama legislator moved to pass a bill that would protect IVF. So why is a national bill needed if the legislator just acted on behalf of basically telling the Supreme Court in Alabama that's wrong and this is not where the American people are? Unfortunately, we've seen a number of people try to fear monger on this very issue. And so Ted and I came together and we believe this effort should be bipartisan to make sure that every parent across the country who wants to bring life into this world and maybe struggling with infertility or others but wants to use IVF to create the miracle of life, bring, bring it into the world, um, you know, has a certainty that that's going to be available to them. And so we're excited about it and believe that um, it's something we can move forward and move forward quickly. Senator Cruz, then why wouldn't Republicans sign up for Senator Duckworth's bill earlier this year, which then actually would have protected what happened in Alabama? Well, because that bill's a very different bill. That bill really seeks to, to backdoor in broader abortion legislation, which is where the Democrats are, but, but, but that's not IVF. Our bill is very simple and it's very focused, and, and it is designed to protect IVF. IVF is miraculous medical technology. It, it, it enables millions of parents to, to have children, to be moms, to be dads. 2% of live births in America right now today come from IVF. It's, it's incredible. And, and, and both Katie and I agree that IVF is incredibly pro-family, that we should be standing and helping parents who want to raise kids. And, and what happened when the Alabama Supreme Court decision came out, there was a lot of confusion, there was a lot of fear, there was a lot of misunderstanding, and people did not want anything to threaten IVF. I agree with that. Katie agrees with that. And so we came together and said, let's draft a simple, straightforward federal bill that creates a federal right, that you as a parent have a right to have access to, to IVF. If you, if you want to have a child and, and you need medical assistance to do so, that should be your right. This is a bill, I think, that should be overwhelmingly bipartisan. The Senate should pass this bill 100 to nothing. We'll see if they do or not, but, but, but on the merits, that's what should happen. Senator Duckworth's bill, though, talked about and clearly asserts that this is about, quote, assisted reproductive technology and insurers' ability to cover those procedures. So in that case, I mean, do you guys think you can get a bipartisan legislation? Why not just work with Senator Duckworth? Well, it, it depends. The, the way the Duckworth bill is written, it's very broad. There's a reason that, that, that no Republicans supported it, because it was ostensibly about IVF, but whatever it was written to give the federal government authority over abortion, potentially to strike down laws governing abortion in states all across the country. And, and that, I get that's the Democrats' agenda. And uh, unfortunately... But why not have bipartisanship on both? Because overwhelmingly, I, I, yes, Americans we, we want, want IVF, but overwhelmingly, and you come from states that have very yeah. restrictive abortion policies, even majority of Republicans think abortion should be able to happen, rape, incest, and life of the mother. That's not true of both your states. Well, listen, abortion is an issue that there are sharp disagreements. People of good faith and good morals disagree. And, and it's why the Supreme Court has said this is a question for the states, and every state decides it differently. And if you look at our Constitution, that's the way we decide really difficult issues of public policy is we leave it to the voters, and that re reflects and respects democracy. IVF is very different. Nearly 90% of Americans believe IVF should be protected. And so what we're trying to say is, look, let's find an area of common ground. We're not going to find complete agreement among all 100 senators on abortion. We're just not. People have different views. That's the beauty of a democracy, that we can have different views. But on IVF, we ought to be able to unify everybody. We ought to be able to get Absolutely. Republicans and Democrats together and say this technology enabling people to be parents is wonderful technology and it is pro-family. So there are issues on which we disagree, but this is one where we can find common ground, I, I very much hope. And I hope so too. I mean, we, we actually wrote this in that way so that it would be very measured and, and simple and to the point, protecting IVF, 
protecting families' ability to bring life into this world. And we both have talked to a number of friends and family members and others, constituents, that tell us their story about being able to bring a child into this world through IVF. And so making sure that we protect that um, in a way that protects religious freedom and liberty and, and families um, and others, I think, is critically important. And that's what we've done here, and we hope to gain some momentum on it. I guess some of the concerns from some hard right members of your party would be, is an IVF embryo considered life? at conception? Well, look, I can tell you that there is unanimity. I believe all 100 senators support IVF. I don't know a single senator that does, that does not. I don't know a single Republican that does not. I don't know a single Democrat that does not. We ought to be able to find real agreement on a question like IVF. You know, you talk about, as Katie mentioned, she and I both have dear friends uh, who had their children through IVF, and they're wonderful parents. They love their, 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 their daughters, their sons. That's an amazing thing. You know, you look at since the development of IVF, there have been over 8 million babies born through IVF. That, that is a fantastic thing, and so many families have been brought joy that, that we ought to be able to find agreement, and, and I think we will. I hope we will. But in the discussion of IVF, abortion comes up, mm -hmm. and majority of Americans are on the side of at least abortion should be allowed, especially in certain cases of rape, incest, life of the mother. So. With that in mind, going into this election season, how do you think about abortion? Well, because that, for Democrats, is going to be one of the main rallying cries to get voters out, as well as tapping funding. I think it also should be for Republicans. I mean, Anne Marie, when you say that, I think the majority of Americans also believe you should not be able to take the life of a child the moment before the child is born. Should there yet, be a federal yet, ban? Yet we saw we saw Democrats vote just the last Congress to be able to do that. I mean, when you talk to people, when you talk about a child in a woman's womb at 39 weeks and actually aborting that baby, the majority of Americans agree that shouldn't be able to happen on America. American soil. So the problem is, is, is the Democrats are trying to deflect by how extreme they are in this position. And I think we're going to keep coming back to it. And I think we're where Americans are. But if you say the Democrats are extreme in that position and you want to have this IVF bill and you think mm -hmm. Duckworth potentially was too far on the margins right. coming into abortion, right. then would you be open to a bipartisanship bill when it comes to things like rape, incest, life mm -hmm. of the mother? So what I would say is today's Democrat position in the Senate is incredibly extreme, what Katie just told you. Every single Democrat in the Senate supports unlimited abortion, partial birth abortion, I literally. I true. But, but it is true. Abortion. So, so nice. Anne-Marie, it actually is true because they all voted for it. They that did. we had a bill last Congress that would strike down every limitation in the country and that would legalize abortion literally until the moment of birth. That is such an extreme position. Nine percent of Americans agree with it. If you look at CDC data, though, there are not abortions in America. Okay, but, okay. But, but every Democrat well, supports there, there them. There actually it, are. It, it, there are late-term abortions, and every single Democrat in voted. In extreme circumstances, though. But every single Democrat supported it, and 91 percent of Americans disagree with that. The vast majority of people who consider themselves pro-choice say, listen, late-term abortion, abortion in the 39th or 40th week, that, th th that is barbaric, and that's the position of every single Democrat, which is why they don't want to talk about their position. What they want to do instead is scaremonger on IVF. They want to suggest those mean Republicans want to take away IVF. Well, let's have an, let's have an area of complete agreement. Let's make clear IVF is fully protected by federal law. And, and, and I think Democrats agree with you on there. And, well, and I would well, push we'll back see, on them who say the, they, all of them okay. want we will abortion see, till, till okay, But that's, that is how they voted. They I mean, at the end of the day, way. what you vote for matters. And they did vote that way, and that's the thing. I just had the Secretary of HHS in front of us at an appropriations hearing, and I asked him about this administration not putting the Hyde Amendment in their budget request, something that's been bipartisan for years, and moving that forward. And then I had actually talked to a woman who performed one of these abortions at 39 weeks right before walking into there. She told me about how barbaric that is, about delivering the baby breech, about putting a knife up that baby's spine, opening it up, pulling out the brains, collapsing the skull, pushing that baby out. So it actually actually does happen. And unfortunately, every Democrat voted to continue to allow that to happen. And the thing is, is we have a duty to continue to talk about that. We're one of eight countries on the entire planet that allows for that. So um, are you both calling for a national ban? Well, there is an existing law that, that, that bans federal partial birth abortion. It's the Democrats that are calling for changing the federal law to legalize partial birth abortion. They voted for striking down every restriction. But understand here, listen, we're not going to this morning 
resolve all the disagreements on abortion. People have very strong, good faith views from, from places of, of deep emotion and personal experience. That's part of the beauty of democracy. That, that's part of the genius of the framers is they recognize when there's questions we have disagreements about, let the voters decide. And, and you would expect the state of New York to have a different resolution than the state of Texas or the state of Alabama. And we've got 50 states. But what we can do is say, are there issues where we have agreement? And IVF is one of them. This bill is designed to protect something that is incredibly important, to give comfort to parents who, who and, and to those who desperately want to be parents, who are scared and they're picking up the newspapers or watching on TV, politicians saying, someone's going to take away IVF. Well, this bill will make clear it will be enshrined in federal law. You have a right to access to this technology. It's also very political going to election. And actually, one of your staffers said that to the Washington Examiner. And as we head into the election, Senator Britt, I have to ask you, since you're with us, your name continuously be floated as this potential VP pick for former President Donald Trump. What is the current dialogue between you and the Trump campaign? Look, I am working diligently on behalf of the people of Alabama in the United States Senate. We have a lot of work to do there, and I'm eager um, to continue that work, and I'm proud to be a part of it. There's no doubt that the American people want Donald Trump back in the White House. I mean, we are seeing that at every single poll, because people want a secure border, they want safe streets, they want stable prices, and then that's what he's going to bring to the White House. So I'm going to continue to work diligently alongside Ted. Um, to bring common sense solutions to the problems facing our country and certainly honored to be able to do that. But if he calls, you accept? <laughs> Listen, I am sure he has a long list, many of which are our colleagues and we're rooting for them for <laughs> sure. Um, bottom line is we're going to all do everything that we can to get Donald Trump back in the White House and also take back the Senate because the fate of our nation is at stake and we believe that that's worth fighting for.